Sports is getting huge, though, so yes. I'm not surprised, and especially being in Korea. Yeah, absolutely. We're just talking about uh, a little bit of esports action going on. We got some hype for the uh, StarCraft II being in the Olympics tomorrow. I thought that was a joke when I first heard it, but here we are. Giving me the knowledge is Kid Not seems to be full of knowledge. Well, I don't Starcraft know about that. Too. I try, but yeah, going into the Olympics this year, it's crazy that they are, and... Um, like I was saying, a couple of years from now, they're going to be doing medals and esports is boy, they're just popping all over the place. That's awesome. That'll be really cool, um, actually. So yeah, and speaking of uh, StarCraft knowledge, uh, let's do a little bit of advertising of ourselves as I loaded this game solo and need to rehost it here because I'm the worst. Uh, Kid Not does some Zerg coaching, coaches all the way up to Masters. Am I correct? That that is correct, and we're doing some. Uh, things going on right now we're going to be doing some tournaments but boy do we have a whole bunch of promotions going on we got players that have just started that are going into gold we got players that have just platinum now getting into diamond and things are going really well indeed yeah it's now is a good time to be in the starcraft 2 scene and if you're new to the game which i uh, i don't assume anyone's here but you know never assume uh we do have a lovely little channel if you see all those weird little cells behind me that is my representative of mitosis gaming that is our uh, little community that we have where we advertise tournaments show matches we have coaches who can help you with the game all sorts of things like that just do a do a little search for uh, mitosis gaming or i can get you a link here in a little bit if anybody's interested in joining you can find kid not there as well if you're looking for some zerg coaching uh, oh, you yeah, don't definitely. know if it's going to be televised just on Twitch. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Um, they'll just, so it's just kind of at the Olympics, but it's not actually going to get any coverage other than what it would normally get. Right? Yeah, I believe it's <laughs> on Twitch, but um, hopefully there'll be some mentioning of it during some of the other events, and um, you know maybe they'll uh, explain yeah. or tell people to go check it out on Twitch. That'd be cool. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's going to be really exciting to, uh, to watch. I'm going to have to keep up to date with that. But, oops, sorry, I'm updating the scoreboard here real quick as well. What was the first map we just did? It was Catalyst? That was Catalyst, yes. And That's this right. one is um, Acid Plants, one of the newer maps. All right, well, let's take a look at the scoreboard real fast. Oh, that's not the scoreboard. There we go. Future did take game number one on Catalyst. This is a best of three series. So we're only going to have three matches here for you today. Yep, that. Potentially. We uh, had a lot of aggression from Penguin, and then we had a counter from Future, and he just took everything Penguin had, and he went up one nothing. Indeed. So, yeah, let's go ahead and hop into it. We are here. We are ready. We are on Acid Plant, LE. This is one of the new maps. Um, I haven't seen – I've only seen one game played on this uh, map, I believe. So yeah, I'm, I'm not um, sure what to expect. Yeah, it's one of the newer maps, and um, so it's kind of just playing out on how things are going to work. So I uh, – I really can't tell you compared to the, the other maps that have been there for quite a while, but uh, it's definitely an interesting map. This guy's, uh, did you see this guy's spawn? Bree, uh, Bree Milkon, if I'm saying, hopefully we're saying your name right. Basically, StarCraft 2 is proxying the Olympics. But, um, <laughs> whether you intended yeah, the putt or not, it's beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, let's hop in this game. Yeah, we are on uh, Acid Plant LE, down in the bottom right, currently up one game. He is your Red Terran player. Give it up for future. And in the upper left-hand corner, we have our green Zerg player who's opening up extremely aggressive. Um, six lanes going across the map. It is our reigning champion for Psy Storm game. It is Penguin. The reigning champion for now. Future giving him a run for his money. This did happen last week, though. Penguin, uh, Penguin dropped his first match, or like first two matches, I think, and then just came back to win four in a row. So definitely do not count Penguin out at any point during this. Um, this will be fun to watch. Yeah, again, this map, a little bit new to me, so uh, hopefully you can all kind of learn with me as we watch here. I love the, the scenery on this, like all the little vines and stuff and the, just the random little bits of shrubbery and trees and whatnot. Very pretty. Uh, as we watch this Reaper fight off six Zerglings, what a boss. He's scaring them all away, too. No Zergling speed means no living Zerglings from this. No, I think the idea was Penguin was going to hope that uh, Reaper was going to move out and he'd be able to delay the uh, command center on the low ground that Future was building. Yeah, but it didn't seem to work out that way. 
Oh, and a nice splits off, too. Penguin actually uh, split his circling part. So he does have four out on the map. Still trying to get a little bit of map presence. Might go in and be able to snipe uh, might snipe this Marine and SCV would be nice. Uh, Reaper is coming home, though. Might send something to the foot. There we go. Two Zerglings are going to start working on this. The command center is finished up, so the SCV can die happy, I suppose. Uh, one Marine will get picked off as well. So two Zerglings remain, but here comes the Reaper. He should be able to clean that up just fine. Oh, but as I say that, I didn't see this big pack of Lings forming outside. Yeah, he's got 14 Lings. Now they have the speed, so he definitely is uh, looking to do a little bit of a run by here as he did in the last game. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, things looking good for Future again. Has the Hellions already out against just Zerglings. That's going to be uh, pretty helpful for him in this uh, hold should these Zerglings choose to attack in the near future. Uh, but yeah, just has yeah. Viking coming out as well. Get some air, air superior, superiority, clear up some overlords, that kind of thing. Yeah, um, Penguin has an overlord on the high ground there, so he may be waiting for those Hellions to move out and then do a little bit of a Ling run by see if he can do some economic damage, and he is... Uh -huh. Currently taking a third base. Yep, so good scouting out of Penguin, able to recognize, you know, nothing's coming his way just yet. The Reaper is back on this side of things. Uh, an Overlord or Creep should scout that in just a second. And there are Queens out to defend it, so I'm not too worried about this Reaper getting anything done, really. Maybe a little bit of scouting, but that's probably going to be it. Ooh, and look at that. Early third command center from Future, using it as his wall. That's yeah, that seems to be common recently. He's going to be using that as, uh, third base as, as a, in the wall there, and then he'd be able to move his Hellions out, and he'd be able to close those supply depots. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, I actually really like that, because um, if you look at the size of this gap, that can be kind of hard to hold, especially against Zergling Floods continuously coming your way. Uh, Overlord will get picked off here. But yeah, using that command center, is just, you know, it's a much bigger structure, so you can get a lot more surface area. So for now, it'll hold the Zerglings out, and then when he's ready, he can lift it and put a couple more barracks when he's got that money for uh, for that production upgrade, as it were. Ooh, Zerglings do get scouted by the Viking here. Nice uh, nice patrol yeah. path out of him. Yeah, he took the Overlord out on the, on the high ground there, and uh, he was able to spot the Zerglings. So looks like Penguin's going to pull, pull those back. He does have a banning nest that he's building, and he's morphing in five banings. All right, so yeah, five Bainlings on the way as four Hellions are making their way to the Creep. Here we go, one Creep Tumor will get picked off right away. There's the Bainlings at the front. Uh, I don't think there's any workers on the third just yet, really. So nothing to worry. Oh, one. One worker. Poor guy. Oh, his life is spared for now. Uh, as the Zerglings do bait the Hellions back a little bit closer to the Queen. Queen's getting a little bold here. Oh, yeah, return home. Don't go off Creep, Queen. Queen. No, it also looks like Penguin was preparing for potential help as he did uh, get a really early banging nest and that seems to be helping him and he just finished his lair. So, oh, it looks like he's going to go into his favorite unit. That's the Mutalist. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll have to see if that's going to catch Future off guard because uh, Penguin does favor those Mutalists. Indeed. Uh, apparently nobody cares about the Olympics or the Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm not. I, I like some of the Winter Olympics. Um, but yeah, Super Bowl, I don't really care about that. Starcraft, that's where it's at for me. Well, that's for sure. I, uh... It looks like Shaft's hanging out in the chat. What's up, Shaft, if that is indeed you, which I think it is. He is hanging out at the Carolina Gaming Summit right now, and I do believe they have more stuff going on. They have an award ceremony at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern, I believe it is, tonight over on their stream on the Carolina Gaming stream. Something like that. Um, so, yeah, go. maybe Shaft will be kind enough to post all that information for you in the chat. We'll see, but here we go. Future rallying up an attack. He has Marines. He's got a couple tanks loaded in those medevacs, and he's got Hellions for the Zergling support. Or to deal with the Zergling, rather. And he's just going to yeah. push straight on to creep. Uh, do you think Piglin's going to be able to get a good surround from this position? It looks like he just has units in one spot. Oh, yeah, those tanks are in such a good spot. Those here. tanks, are, yeah, they're going to give him a hard time. He's got, to, uh, got those protected by the Marines. He target fires the banglings and yeah it looks like he's gonna be able to do some damage here indeed yeah this third base is pretty much ransacked oh wow look at that positioning for the tanks that is just incredible four kills three kills on the other and just the amount of damage that they have been able to output in these marines a safe haven to retreat to man that is a sweet spot for tanks yeah that's definitely a good spot we do have bang speed just finished and we have eight mutas coming out we go. Oh, Zergling's actually getting a really nice wraparound. Will deny that push forward a little bit more. Uh, and the rest of this Muta's coming out. Oh no, the medevac! 
gets picked he gets off. The medevac is getting the three tanks, and he's going to shut that down. He is taking the wow. third base at another location. And currently, Future is on three bases, 67 SCVs to 47 drones, but he does have those pesky mutilists out, so it is going to give him some map control. Yeah, turret's coming down in desperation for Future. Uh, he did hit at the exact right moment uh, to get as much damage done as he could. As we saw, he got the third base, but here comes Penguin for the counterattack. Mutilist already trying to get into a good position to maybe snipe some SCVs, but the Marines are waiting. And they are not going to be able to get in there. Uh, maybe the Zerglings and Banelings will have a little bit more luck on the left-hand side as they group up with the Mutilisks here. Yeah, it looks like he was going to put down uh, three engineering base to try and block the... <laughs> Mutas and the Banes, and they're going toward the third base. Oh! Oh, those SCVs. The SCVs 11 going out in the blink of an eye. Uh, the rest of them do make it to their other mineral line, so he at least does save part of that mineral line, but ow, that hurts. Uh, third base will fly back over, though, and resume mining, so not the biggest hit uh, for future. He's going to be able to recover just fine, I think. He's got more workers still than Penguin even does. Yeah, definitely um, starting to stabilize here. They've both done some damage. And, uh, boy, look at this chat. Yeah. We're getting a lot of viewers here. And hope you guys are enjoying the games here. Uh, we had a quick one the first one, but this one's turning out to be an exciting game. Indeed. Oh, something getting picked off there. Liberator, maybe. What was that? Muta's getting something in the top left of the... Uh... Zerg base there. I missed it. Maybe just don't. Yeah, I didn't happen to notice it either. It looks I just like, saw um, it die, and I did. It was some air unit, maybe a medevac or a liberator. Who knows? Probably, uh, probably a medevac drop. Maybe a couple marines or something. But we have Thor's coming out now. That is definitely going to help Future uh, as long as he can survive these banelings, and they will do that with the st stim off creep. The banelings just can't keep up. Yeah, he was definitely moving up to. He was able to target fire a lot of those banelings down, and um, Penguin was not able to do any damage. So, yep, yeah, uh, let's take a quick look at the upgrades. There is plus one attack coming down now for Penguin. Wow, I didn't even notice. Future is already on 2-2 with his Marines, and he's got Widow Mines about to be coming out very soon as well. He's going to have the perfect composition to deal with Circling Vinny Muta. Thor's Widow Mines Marines, I think if used properly and microed correctly, is a phenomenal counter for that. Here we go, though. A little uh, pack might get caught off guard here. Does lift up and try to get away with most of that. Mutas are hot in tow, though. Yeah, he's got the upgrades. He's also um, researching the drilling clouds for the Widow Mines. Mm -hmm. Oh, and at the same time, he's dropping. Here. Oh, no, the medevacs do get finally caught by the Zerglings, Mutas, and uh, Banelings. But here we go, double drop in the main. At the same time, he's going to be simultaneously pushing onto the third. Future is everywhere right now. He pulled uh, Penguin's army way out of position with those uh, three medevacs, which unfortunately he lost, but... In return, he's able to get uh, third base, most likely the main. We'll see here. Yeah, it looks like he's going to take out the main base. Those widow mines, he's got those in a good position. And yeah. Oh, but full counter attack. Looks like, looks like Penguin. Yeah, base trade scenario, I guess. Oh, Thor is here, though, to deal with the mutas. They get one shot and are like, oh, nope, want none of that. Turret's also doing crazy damage. I don't know. It's looking rough for Penguin. He is supply blocked. He has lost his main. There's the good game getting called wow we had another lively game there back and forth just like the first game it was a little bit later but it was a really exciting game oh my indeed so yep we've got more games coming this is a best of five series uh like i said earlier hopefully i think that's what i said earlier i might have said best of three it is a best of five series usually a best of seven uh today we had to cut a little bit short one of the players uh could not do the usual seven games due to uh timing constraints but um yeah, we're going to be hopping into this next game here in just a minute. So thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed that game. That was intense. I re uh, the biggest thing I can take from that is probably just that uh, tank positioning, how we use the medevacs to lift him up, get him on that ledge, and then the Marines just come around the ramp to support, and they've got the tank fire already there waiting. That was just beautiful. So Terrence, take note. Utilize that, uh, utilize that little ledge there. Absolutely, that was good positioning on the tanks. He was able to take out the third base, and then um, he got into the main base. He was able to take that out, so a lot of aggression. Uh, good job that game. Yeah, awesome stuff. All right, so we are going to be hopping into game number three here in just a moment. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.